getting ready to cut this recess in for the lap joint of the short rails that go across the wagon. Pretty simple. Um, we just cut a. I'm just going to do a quick knife line here. Nothing special. All these joints I'm going to be using polyurethane glue, which is waterproof, to help protect the wagon from the elements. And then I'm just going to saw down this side. Keep it nice and square. Right to my line. Now, I like cutting a relief cut right in the middle. Shot of the line. There we go. Now, not much to this. Just pop it out. Oh dear. And crack down on the line. Another one. Whew. All right. Well, that was an easier one. But now we're going to clean this up. A um, little bit high there. I'm going to use a file to clean this up. It's this. Keeping the file level with the bench. Now we got it. Okay. So that's the three corners. That's one of the front ones. Rear, front, rear. Now, gotta clear the bench and uh, get ready to cut our mortises. All right, I think last time we I was out in the shed, I finished making these, the fence posts. I guess you call it a fence. Yeah, you call it a fence. Uh, to hold the, the babies in the wagon. Um, I've gone ahead and started the rails. Now the rails are going to be going to be dovetailed around the corner. So as they come around like this, they'll dovetail into the one coming from the other direction. Um, now the dovetails are fitted in a way that the top rail at the back uh, has the dovetails holding the back rail in. Uh, like like so, uh, yeah, like this. That way, when a kid is leaning against the rail, especially the back one, um, it's going to be holding that back rail uh, in a mechanical joint, not just a glue joint. Whereas the second rail down here, where a kid leaning back won't be on so much, this rail, this dovetail will be the opposite direction. Uh, it will be this way holding the two rails on either side of the wagon together this way. So uh, the way the dovetails are arranged um, keeps the fence post together this way and keeps the rails um, secure, uh, thinking about how the kids are going to be leaning against them as well. So 
Uh, I think that makes sense. This is the first time making a wagon, so uh, who knows? I might have to be uh, fixing all that uh, next year. Who knows? But the theory is right. And that's that's what you have to start off with, is theory. So uh, I have most of the dovetails cut, but I'm going to go ahead and cut one dovetail with you today. All right, so I have... All right, so uh, here's one of the tails of the long rail that's going to be holding the back rail in. Uh, this is a little tool, um, the Paul Sellers, I call it, uh, dovetail tool. Now mine is made out of stone, custom made from myself. Um, awesome. Anyway, uh, anything would do. Um, you just got to measure the angle that you want for your dovetails. Sometimes just eyeballing it is good enough. But normally I'd use a knife line. But when I f make the tail first, I just use a pencil uh, because I mark out the um, the female or the male. This is the male. I mark out the female with uh, a knife line to match this one. So this one, it doesn't matter that I'm using pencil because the other one is going to mark from this one with a knife line uh, wherever that saw, uh, saw goes. Yeah, so I've already ma mapped it out, but this is kind of how it works right there. I'm going to do the square side here now. That line, I'm not really looking to follow that line so much as it's just meant to make sure my saw curve is par parallel to that line. That way I know uh, my saw is running square to this face and this face. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this one now. I like cutting this one because you can just snip off the shoulders and uh, it's a lot funner to cut than the other one where you have to go in here. So let's just uh, start off here. This is my dovetail saw. I believe it's 18 points per inch. Which is about as fine as I'll ever need. So I'll make sure I'm square here. That's good. chisel but yeah a little bit there actually I use a knife just to cut in there and do the other side we'll have a, a formed tail from a line around from the other side. I recently set the teeth on that saw and the 
it feels a little bit grabby. I might have to take a little bit of set off. Not hard to do. But, uh, I don't know, maybe it'll break in a little bit. Fresh to sharpened and set. So it feels a little bit grabby. Maybe I should reduce the, um, the, uh, aggressiveness of the teeth next time I file it. It's a little bit smoother. Well there we go, there's a formed tail. And now we'll cut the uh, matching joint. Next I'm gonna set up the width of my cut. So what I do, I just take my stock, set it up flush, and Make a line. Now, let me check, make sure that line is square. It should be. It is. Good. And a little bit shaky. I uh, just discovered a hornet's nest in next to my head. I was wondering what I was hearing. He was in the middle of uh, adding paper. He was building it. Well, is it a he or she that builds nest? I don't know. Anyway, I took a blowtorch to him and that took care of that. I hate those things. I really do hate those things. So here we go. Just transferring my lines of the uh, dovetail down this side. That way we have a place for that dovetail to fit into. And I'll transfer down this side as well. Yeah, I don't have the depth I put on this side, but it's okay. We'll get that. Very light strokes. There we go. Okay, time to cut the dovetail. So, I'm lining this tail up here now. It's nice and flush on each side. The corner, the shoulders are lined up. Everything's ready to mark. It's a well supported and square two piece. I'm just going to take a knife line here now, a knife, and score the ingrain right here. Whoops. Try to have the tape. Now just score the other side the same way. Oops. There we go. Move that out of the way. I'm gonna set my knife in the line and drag back through like that. Set my knife in the line. And drag through, deepening that line, making it easier to see. There you go. Okay, so here's my knife line. I'm going to try to leave that knife line. Okay, this is my waist, so I'm going to leave my knife line on this side of the saw. Just score the edge of the teeth here. There we go, right on the edge of the knife line there now. Oops. 
Hopefully there's not too much camera shake. And again, I'm coming this side of the hill, the knife line. So I want to see, just see the knife line barely peeking out this side of my saw plate. Saws is like really narrow files. Oh crap. I think that thing is back. Where's my blowtorch? Get out of here. Yes, he is back too. Crap. He's back. That's right, you're you're gonna get it. Get out. Get out the door. Just wait till I get my blowtorch. I'll kill you. I'll roast you. chisel this out but I like to speed things up with a with a coping saw saw it out and then I file the flush down there if I can get it started See if that's narrow enough for this file. It is not. Alright, I'm gonna take this rough file here and go from each side. Take a nice sharp chisel. Come in this side here. Using my lines as a oh, going through and get my finger. That's not a smart move. Come on 
the other side. I'm hearing another hornet. Better not be coming back here, sir. right. Can't get in now. Get out of it. Crap. Is he in? Oh, he's trying hard to get in. Okay. Now let's see how that fits. That should go that way. Down there. Take our tail. Tools in the way here. And my got here. So very tight where I uh, left my lines. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna Take my chisel here and put on the knife line. And take a little bit off. And wiggle it down. Like that. Take my knife. And score those fibers off. There we go. Let's see if it fits. There we go. That's a that's a nice tight fit. Take my leather face dead blow hammer. Give it a couple little taps. And that looks pretty tight. That looks pretty. Well, that concludes part three of my wagon project. Um, this this part we did all the fencing. Uh, next time we'll see uh, the mortars going into the bottom, and uh, hopefully we'll get around to assembly and uh, finally get to see what the finished product's going to look like. I hope you've been enjoying this little series so far, and uh, join me next time for part four.